Welcome to the Word of Life Center podcast. It's our desire that today's message would equip and empower you to see the Word of God bring life to your life. I want to share with you tonight uh, some things, I guess, let me, let me think of the right way to say this, um, personal results of the resurrection. You know, um, and I, I don't mean this in a critical way because I do this from time to time too, uh, minister from the Word toward people's emotional needs, you know, to try to encourage them or to strengthen them and to build them up. But I found out in my own personal life, if you ever get a revelation of what the resurrection did for you, then you'll be able to deal with that yourself. There'll be nothing really outside the purview of your ability to be able to conquer life, conquer things in your life, overcome things in your life that, that, that seemingly may be almost impossible, but you know the resurrection was impossible. Amen? So what I'm going to share with you tonight are some things that have been done for me by the resurrection, but they'll do, they'll work for anybody that'll accept them. Now, here's the, here's the thing, okay? I'm probably not going to touch an emotional cord tonight. See, you're going to have to get this because it's the word of God and make up your mind. I'm going to do this. I'm going to believe this. This is how I'm going to live my life because these are things that I learned early on about the resurrection that, that literally empowered me to live a Christian life. Because I'm going to tell you, you can go to emotional services and you can go, you know, to services where you're inspired. But I want to tell you, that's not going to carry you through. It might help you get to a point where you can believe God, but you've got to grab hold of what the resurrection did for you and say, you know what, that's me that's my life. That's who I am. And so I'm going to show you this tonight from the Word. So I'm going to be teaching you tonight. I hope you brought your Bibles with you or brought something that you can look at other than Facebook. Listen, I'm watching. Becky, Becky was preaching one service, I think it was last year at Mother's Day, and so I decided to go, go in the back back there. I was watching. Yeah, and now I, I've got Don and him. They tell me, hey, you know, so-and-so, they were, they were on Facebook while you were... No, they don't. I'm just kidding. They don't do that. It wouldn't matter. You'd do it anyway. <laughs> but you have to know these things for yourself, Okay. And you can't know them because they're just a Christian phrase or a Christian um, declaration. You've got to apply it to your own personal life. And so the first thing that the resurrection brought to me was forgiveness of sins. You know, everybody says, yeah, God forgives us, God forgives us. And then we live with condemnation over sin. Listen to, to what it, the Word says in Acts chapter 5, verse 30. Listen to this. The God of our fathers, now listen to this, raised up Jesus, I love this, this is Peter preaching, whom you murdered by hanging on a tree. Just so you know. Okay? All right, now listen to the next verse. In Him, God has exalted to his right hand, to be prince and savior. Now listen to this. To give repentance to Israel and what? Forgiveness of sins. Jesus' resurrection gives us forgiveness of sin. Now, my sin trail was massive. Okay? Okay. But thank God I was forgiven. But you know, 
that's usually not what we deal with. What we deal with is when we get into sin after we get saved. And we think, well, well, that's different. No, it's not. Listen to Acts chapter 13, verse 32. We declare to you glad tidings. That promise which was made to the fathers, God has fulfilled this for us, their children, in that he has raised us up, Jesus, as it's also written in the psalm. All right, now jump over with me to verse 38. Therefore, let it be known to you, brethren, that through this man is preached to you forgiveness of sin. He has preached to you forgiveness of sin. I've got good news for you. God forgives you of your sin. Colossians 1.14 says, In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. Now listen to me. Listen to me carefully. Jesus was raised from the dead so you could have forgiveness of sin. I like what it said, what Peter said, repent and receive forgiveness of sins. You do know that you don't receive forgiveness of sins and stay with it. Because you've bound yourself to that sin. It's not that God doesn't forgive you, you've bound yourself to To that sin. But I've got good news for you. It doesn't matter. And I don't mean this. I'm not a proponent of this. But it doesn't matter how many times you sin. Or what sins you think you've committed. God will forgive you. That's what Jesus came for. To forgive you of your sins. And sometimes we get real religious and we, always, we add a but to that. Well, but. There is no but. If you ask God for forgiveness, he forgives you. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, he is just and faithful to forgive you and to cleanse you. That's our God. Jesus did that in the resurrection. He brought that to us. Forgiveness of sin. Everybody say forgiveness of sins. Forgiveness of sin. Say thank God. Thank God. I'm, forgiven. I'm forgiven. Sin is not a controlling factor in my life. Sin is not a factor. Because I repent. I repent. And I receive, I receive. Forgiveness. forgiveness. Ha ha devil. Ha, ha. You can't hold me to that. I am forgiven. I am forgiven. I am forgiven. You have forgiveness of sin. It belongs to you. Hebrews 9, 12. Listen to this. I like this. It says, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered once into the holy place, having obtained eternal Redemption for us. His blood in heaven received, provided eternal redemption, which means forgiveness of sins. That belongs to us. Hebrews 9.28 says it this way. Christ was offered once, everybody say once, once, to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for him, he'll appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. You know what that means? That means when he comes back, he's not going to be talking to you about sin. He's going to be talking to you about salvation. So if you've been struggling with sin, ask God to forgive you. And if you were here when John Bevere was here, he spelled it out so clear. Repent. Go a different direction. You can't keep, you have to repent, but he forgives you. Say, well, but I stumbled and I fell again. He forgave you again. Listen, here's one of the greatest things. Uh, the Lord said, he's, uh, he was talking to Peter, 
And, and Peter, he told Peter, he said, Peter, you're going to have to forgive him. Peter said, I am. <laughs> yeah. How many times? Seven times 70. In a day. You've got to forgive. All right. You think God would do any less for you? Well, he's giving up on me. No. Well, but I, I've kept, I've just keep battling the same thing. We'll just keep asking him forgiveness. You fight your way out of it and let God help you. You'd be amazed. Now, what I'm going to share with you later will help you with that, but you'd be amazed at what can happen. But I want to tell you today, listen to me. The, one of the greatest things that happened to me when I got saved was I found out I was forgiven of my sin. And I found out that Jesus provided that in the resurrection, so it's forever. It's forever. All those ugly things still come in my mind. You ever have ugly things come in your mind? Yeah, I know you don't, but I do. <laughs> they, they'll pop up, you know, and you, where did that come from? Next thing you know, you're, you're listening to the devil. Wow, you know, you didn't really get forgiveness. You, you're still thinking that. That's still on your mind. Well, you know, the best thing to do, Father, thank you that you forgive me. I, I found out that the devil has no answer for forgiveness of sins. He has no answer for it. Okay? Quit tormenting yourself with sin. And, well, but I got to do something. Yes, you do. Here's what you got to do. You got to say, Father... Forgive me. And then you do your best to go a different direction and ask him to empower you to go a different direction. You'd be amazed at what you can accomplish. Why? Because the resurrection provided me with redemption through his blood. And I like the way the King James says it. It's almost like even the forgiveness of sin. So you're free. The resurrection brought it. It's ours. Thank God we don't have to deal with it. All right, now here's the thing that helps you get away from sin. Okay, listen to me. He brought me to a place of righteousness. Now, when I first got saved, that was hard for me to receive. I knew God loved me enough to forgive my sin, but to make me right... Me, I'm right with God. I mean, I'm okay with God and, and, and he's okay with me and he's okay with me and my life and all oh my good, the bad and the ugly. He, he says I'm okay. In fact, I'm so okay, I can talk to him anytime I want regardless because he's there for me. Listen to what it says in Romans chapter 4, verse 25. You ready? It says, he was delivered up because of my offenses. Now, are you ready for this? But he was raised because of my justification. He was raised so I could be justified. I could be, same word, righteous. I could be right with God. Man, when I, when I realized the power of the resurrection, that God said, you're right with me, it's okay. You look in the mirror and you see imperfection. He looks in the mirror and he sees the blood of Jesus and he says, yeah, but you're right with me. You are right with me. Now, Here's the thing that a lot of people, well, let me, let me read a couple more scriptures about it first. Listen to this. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Listen. I don't have time to get into this, but this will blow your mind if you really think about it. Jesus was made to be sin who knew no sin. He made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. Now, religious people, can't, they, they don't get it. Wait a minute. You mean he died for my sins? No, that's not what it says. Put it back up there. It says he was, listen to this, he was made 
to be sin. Who knew no sin? Do you, under, do you realize, now, just think about this a minute. Do you realize that no person is going to go to hell because of sin? Oh, well, everybody's going to be saved. No, no. You have to believe on the Lord Jesus to be saved. Okay. But listen to me. Your sin's not what's doing it. It's your unbelief. Do you know we've got Christians who live in unbelief? Oh, no, not me. I'm just an old worm in the dust. Well, you know, I'm just the worst of the worst. If I could just barely creep in uh, and just barely make it, you better go read the Bible. Because that's not what the Bible says. It says he was who knew no sin was made to be sin, and he had a purpose in mind by doing that, that you might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. In Him. When I walk in Jesus, I'm right with God. I'm in the I'm a righteousness of God. I have a right. I have rights. I can go before the throne of God. I can I can pray. I can and I know God hears me. Well you know but you were a little bit ugly today, or well, you weren't quite perfect today. I am not justified. I am not made right because of my perfection or my imperfection or my actions. I am made right with God because I believe on Jesus. And devil, you can say what you want. You can try to condemn me all you want. But I want to tell you that that is not going to work with me. Because I am not, Jesus was raised from the dead to make sure that I had the ability to be right with God. Well, but I just don't know the Bible that well. Do you know that scripture? It's all you need. Listen to this. Acts chapter 13, verse 39. By him... Everyone who believes. How many? Everyone who believes is justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. So who does that include? All that believe are justified right From all things which you could not be justified by the law. Ha ha devil. I like that. It says over in Romans, there is no condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus. See, your emotions will mess with you. Well, but you know, I'm just, I'm just so bad. I just... I just hadn't done right. I don't know what, what I'm going to do. I know what you're going to do. You're going to get up and you're going to declare, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Jesus paid a price for me. He was raised from the dead so that I could be right with God. And I'm going to, I'm going to stand up. I'm going to wipe my tears. I'm going to quit being an emotional basket case. And I'm going to start saying what God says about me. You'd be amazed. You would be amazed at how that will change your life. But you don't understand. I I know. I I know. You're a special case. The only one in the whole world. Listen, let me read you this scripture out of Romans chapter 5. It's pretty lengthy, but just stick with me, okay? Because this will help you. Scarcely for a righteous man will one die. In other words, you know, there are some people that will die for somebody that, you know, that's right. Okay. Yet perhaps for a good man, someone even might dare to die. But God demonstrated his love toward us. And then while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than 
having now been justified, made right by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more being reconciled, shall we be saved by life. Man, I tell you, listen, that can be a religious scripture to you, or that can be life to you. It's life to me. Because the world is going to tell you just the opposite. Religious people will tell you just the opposite. But I want to tell you something. Listen to me. You've got to make up your mind. You're going to go to the Bible. When you're struggling with sin in your life, quit trying to say, I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better. Go to God first and say, God, forgive me. And then start thanking him that you are the righteousness of God in Christ. That your sins are forgiven. That if he forgave you while you were a sinner, how much more now is he willing to work with you and work in your life? Now listen, let me just so you'll understand this, okay? This is not a get out of jail free card to live like you want to live. Because he that is righteous does righteously. But see, once you get the revelation that you're the righteousness of God, you're going to start acting like it. You're going to start acting like it. It's like it'll become a revelation to you. Hey, you know what? I'm a righteousness of God. And the amazing thing is you'll start saying, you know, if I'm the righteousness of God, I better start behaving. I better start doing something different. Now, this is an off-the-wall example, okay? But this will help you. When I was in high school, I was kind of, I, especially when I was a, a freshman, I was scrawny. You know, I didn't have much meat on my bones. And, and um, uh, the, you know, if, in, our, in our small town, everybody played football. But I just didn't think I could play. I was just too scrawny and, and, and didn't think I could play. And, and uh, I just had a poor image of myself. And, and didn't think I could play. So I joined the band. I don't know why, because I couldn't play a lick or nothing. But, but anyway, I did. And so I went to the football games. And, uh, but it was just kind of like, no, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to do that. That next year, that next summer, they had, um, no, it wasn't the next summer. It was spring practice in the, that next spring. So I was going to be that next year. I was going to be a sophomore. That spring, somebody, one of my friends said, come on, just come out. Just go try out. Come on, you need to go try out. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Well, they lined everybody up, you know, at the, at the goal line to run a hundred yards. I beat everybody by 10 yards. And my coach starts to you're a football player. <laughs> he started telling me I was a football player. I didn't, I hadn't played football. I didn't play any. Yeah, I'm a football player. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a football. You know what? I became a football player. See, when you start saying you're the righteousness of God in Christ, when you start hearing that and you start understanding what Jesus did for you and the death that he paid and the resurrection power that he's given you, it'll change your whole perspective of life. You, don't want, you won't want to go live in sin. You won't want to get trapped in stuff. You'll be fighting for who you are. No, that's not who I am. I'm a football player. I'm a righteousness of God. It, it, changed my whole, it changed my whole life when I got that revelation. I thank God I got it early because it kept me out of guilt and condemnation. It kept me looking for holiness and looking for to live a right life instead of a wrong life because I knew what Jesus had done for me. 
The resurrection gave me that. The resurrection also gave me new life. You know, I, I don't understand how people walk away from new life, but they do. I've seen people born again, come alive unto God. Let, let me read you this scripture, Romans 6, 4. We were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. I, I was born again. I got a new life, a new start. And I can tell you, you can ask Becky, she or I have never looked back. We have never looked back from that new life that God gave us. Why would you want to devalue the resurrection to the point that the new birth is not enough? A new life is not enough. See, I, when I found out that he raised me up to newness of life, all of a sudden, it, it changed everything. 2 Corinthians 5.17 was real to me. I Listen, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Well, didn't you have trouble breaking free from all that? No. No, I had a few little things here and there, you know, but basically, no, I did not. Because I knew God had raised his son from the dead to give me a new life. A different life. And it's valuable to me. That life, listen, that life is valuable to me. It has brought me through a myriad of things in life that if I had not had the new life, I wouldn't have made it. Yes, yes. Just could, wouldn't have made it. Thank you, Lord. Amen. But because I had newness of life, I could do it. Listen to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. This is really, this is one of my favorite scriptures in the Amplified Bible. I want you to listen, listen to what it says. I think it's, I think it'll help you. Hopefully they've got it in the Amplified there. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. It's not up there, so I'm guessing they don't. <laughs> I, I'm, gonna, I, I, I'm pretty sure I could quote it, but just in case, let me just, let me just read it to you. Okay, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Hey, there we go. For we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship recreated in Christ Jesus. Born anew that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking, taking paths, listen to this, taking paths which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. I found that path. I found that path. That new life path. And I, I, I'm not, I've never gotten off of it. I'm not bragging. It ought to be the testimony of every person. I know you say, well, pastor, I didn't get back on it. You're still a new creature. You just don't know it. You're just acting like the old man. You've got to understand and realize that's not who I am. Amen. Now, look, that doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. Not going to mean you're going to do anything perfectly. I've made lots of mistakes on this journey. And I've done things that I'm ashamed of on this journey. But the good news is I didn't get off the path. Amen. Years ago, when we first started the church here, there was not much out here. That was before 31, 32 out there. And, and you could walk all the way to Pines Road through the woods. And so I would spend half a day praying in the woods, just walking and praying in the woods. And I, there was a path, and I walked that path. 
You know, one day I'm walking and praying and I look up and there is a snake in the path. Listen, you're going to have snakes get on your path. So here's what most people do. They go around them and they get off the path. That's exactly what the devil wants you to do. I said, this is my path, not yours. And I got me a big stick and I beat that snake dead. And I walked on my path. And that's what you've got to do in life. God's got a path for you to walk. You walk that path and you can, you can, it's amazing what God can do walking that path. And you say, well, the snake drove me off. Well, kill the snake, get back on the path and start walking the way God wants you to walk. You're a new creature. Old things have passed away. They're not things you do on the weekend. They're passed away. Hallelujah. Now listen, I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you that this what the, this is these are things the resurrection did for me. It just gave me a new life. A whole you know, and listen, I, I and I understand people from the outside, they don't understand it. They don't get it. They have, they don't they don't get it at all. And I can understand that because the first time I went to church, you know, before I got saved, I told Becky, I said, these people are crazy. I didn't know that it was new life in action. I just knew it was different than what I knew and how I lived and how I operated. But man, once I jumped, once I jumped in, whoo, I am so glad. I am so glad that I did because it put me on a path. And don't kid yourself. Listen to me. You are important to God. He has a path. He has a race for you to run. He has a purpose for your life. That's one of the things that, that, that we at Word of Life do. First of all, we want you to know God, but we want you to know your purpose. We want you to know your purpose. If you get a revelation of that, you'd be amazed at how, how it could change your life. But you've got to stay on the path. Kill the snakes along the way. Don't go home and have dreams about snakes tonight. <laughs> Here's something else that happened, okay? <clears throat> the resurrection gave me power for living. You know, one of the most amazing things that happened to me, and I actually feel sorry for people that this doesn't, they don't get this. I found out that when I got saved, I had power. I had, I had an ability to change my circumstances. I had ability to, to receive healing in my body. I had an ability to have wisdom beyond my years, beyond my mental capacity. I had power. I had things that were available to me that I didn't have before. I lived by my wits before I got saved. But all of a sudden, I found out, man, this is the life. I found out I didn't have to just to depend on my God, I mean on my job for God to supply my needs. That's power, folks. Man, I got a hold of Philippians 4.19 when I got saved, and that came out of my mouth. Becky and I both, it came out of our mouth all the time. I mean, it was amazing. And to watch how God would provide for us. I could tell you story after story when we first got saved. I was a baby Christian, but the resurrection gave me power. We didn't have any money. I'd go to, I'd go to work and have to drive across town and the car would be on empty. You just put a piece of cardboard over it and really that's exactly what we, just put cardboard over the empty and keep driving. Now, if your face not there, don't do it. But I'm just telling you, it worked. (laughs) 
God spoke to me to go on a mission trip. Didn't have the money. Prayed. I asked. I just prayed and said, God, I just believe you supply all my needs. I believe you for, for the money. I was supposed to leave the next morning. That night had not, did not have the money. Next that night, I don't remember what time. It was late. There was a knock on the door. It was a member of the church. Heard you're going on a mission trip. Yeah, I'm going in the morning. <laughs> he said, That's wonderful. He said, Well, the Lord dealt with me and spoke to me, told me to give you this money. It was the exact amount of money that I needed to go on that trip. Listen, folks. That's power. I found out I had power. I didn't do it for greed. It wasn't something that I did in the flesh, but I had power. God gave me power. And you know, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19 and 20, that he did it. He gave me power. And, he, and Paul prayed that we'd understand we had power. And then it goes in verse 20, it says, because God demonstrated it by raising Jesus from the dead. Which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. That's pretty powerful stuff. I don't think we've even dare even tapped into all that God wants to do for us. Well, I tried that and it didn't work. Well, try again. Try again. You know, nowadays it's not as big a deal. But, you know, when I was growing up, I had an old 53 Chevrolet. And it never started the first time. It never started the first time. I didn't even expect it to start the first time. But you keep pumping that gas and cranking on it, finally, it starts. Keep pumping the gas. Keep starting. Don't ever quit. Don't ever give up. Keep believing. Keep expecting. Keep asking God. Why? Because you've got that power. You've got it. All right, I got two more real quick. I know I'm, I'm just about out of time, but listen to this. This is something that, that we, we know mentally, but you've got to get a greater revelation of. He gave me eternal life. He gave me eternal life. I, I, I found out that, that when, I, when I made Jesus the Lord of my life, I, I got e- eternal life. It's a free gift from God. The resurrection, listen to me, guaranteed me eternal life. It means I'm going to live forever. I'm going to have, I, I, just so you'll understand this, I'm going to have my personality forever. So if you're around me in heaven, nothing new. <laughs> but the same with you. We're going to be who we are. We're just going to be the best version of who we are. Amen. 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 We're going to be what God says we are. But you're going to be you. And you're going to be you for eternity. If Jesus is your Lord. Now, if he's not, you're still going to have eternal life. But it's really not called life. It's called eternal death. But that came because of the resurrection. So, why are you saying that, Pastor? I, I know this may be a little bit more of it, but, but it, ought to, it ought to really make you realize, why would you fear death if eternity is yours? I've told this story before, I'm sure, but we had a couple in the church many years ago, Florida and Roscoe Combs, and they were really, I think, almost like founding members of the church when we first started in he, he was older. He was in his 80s, and he had been a, a, worked in a body shop and painted cars. You know, back, when, back then when he was younger, they didn't know anything about masks or anything. They just sprayed the paint. And he got his lungs all, you know, full of lacquered up and that type of thing. And, and um, he was in his 80s. I don't remember how old. you remember? 70s, mid-70s. Anyway, um, uh, he, you know, his lungs just started shutting down on him. And and uh, I would go visit him. There was a joy in his life. He never was down. He was never discouraged. And he was laying there uh, in the bed, and Florida there, was there next to him. And, and uh, 
he sat up in the bed and said, well, there's Jesus. I got to go, lay down and die. Just, he was gone. When eternal life is real to you, you don't have to fret about that. Well, we're going to see our loved ones in heaven. I believe we will. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, this is good news for you. You won't have to be married to John. (laughs) Well, Jesus taught that. No marriage in heaven. I'm just picking at her. He'll be around, I can tell you for sure. (laughs) <laughs> but listen when you lose a loved one I understand you, you've got a soul tie there you're hooked up with them but the good news is they hadn't gone very far amen they hadn't gone very far if Jesus is their Lord alright last one and um, I, I'm through and I'm, I'm going to just give you this one I'm not going to uh, read it but uh, it's in 1 Corinthians 15 but here's the thing I have hope for tomorrow. And I know I've just said about that, about eternal life. But you know, we are either going to breathe our last breath and be with Jesus, or Jesus is going to come back for us, and our mortal body is going to put on immortality. Man, I want to be a part of that train. I mean, I, I, I'll go either way, but I would love to be here and feel that energy. Same resurrection energy that Jesus experienced is going to flow through your body and mortality is going to be swallowed up by immortality. You're going to become immortal. Your body is going to totally change. All the deformities, all the, I'm sure you won't even... Good news, you won't have gray hair. Good news, some of you will get your hair back. We'll be what God created us to be in our physical bodies like we are in our spirits. So you've always got hope for tomorrow. Well, I'm just discouraged. Why? Well, I'm just having a bad day. Well, you've got eternity. Get over it. Enjoy life. Let God work in your life. Let God do something different in your life. Amen? But, but that's what the resurrection gave me. That's not something I, I, I just kind of put together, a good sermon. These are things that, that I got. They belong to me. And I just want to encourage you tonight. Listen to me. Don't let emotion or struggles or trials rule your life. Go to the Word of God and find out what the resurrection did for you. And it'll bring encouragement to your life as long as you're on the earth. You go look at some of the uh, uh, the apostles and, and you go read about the martyrs. There are a lot of people that died, you know, horrible deaths for the gospel, but they did it with joy because they had a revelation. You can surely get through tomorrow with what I gave you tonight. Amen. Thanks for listening to the Word of Life Center podcast. You can connect with us on Facebook and Twitter or at our website, wordoflifecenter.org.